Hi, I'm Taylor Gill. I'm a work and travel lifestyle coach. I teach remote professionals how to work anywhere and live everywhere. And today I'm sharing with you how to get started as a house sitter so that you can travel the world. When people usually meet me and they ask, oh, that's so cool what you do. How do you travel? Or, you know, how do you afford to travel? And they say, oh, I do it by house sitting. And they go, oh, that that's cool. What What is house sitting? <laughs> and so I usually have to explain a little bit about what, not only my job and what I do, but then how I actually do it. So what is house sitting? House sitting is where people are typically going on a vacation or maybe they're on a work trip and they would want to bring someone into their home to take care of their pets and their home while they're away. So it is called house sitting, but it is really more pet sitting responsibilities. Um, so it could be cats and dogs are the most common. It could be farm animals. If you're out like kind of more on a ranch, ranch animals, you could have reptiles, you could have fish, you could have all sorts of things. But obviously most of the cats are the most common and that's what you typically find. Um, so, but in exchange for me coming in and taking care of their home and their animals, I am provided with free accommodation. So I do not pay to house it. Now, the only thing I do pay for is to be on the platforms that help me find the house sits. So the best way to get started is to just join a platform. There are many out there and you just kind of have to figure out where it is that you want to house it. And that will help you determine which um, platforms to be on. So I'm currently on four, which is not necessary. I would say just start with one. Um, but I'm on three international ones and that's trusted house sitters, house carers, and Nomador. And then I'm also on a currently I'm on a local or like a regional one, which is house sitters America. Cause I've just been in the U S for the last year. I've also joined other regional ones when I was in those areas. So when I was in New Zealand, I joined Kiwi house sitters. And when I was in Australia, I joined one there. So just kind of depends where you're going and where you're going to be spending most of your time. So I came upon house sitting myself when I was researching how I was going to pay for accommodation while I was in New Zealand because I was on the working holiday visa and I knew that I could get a job in New Zealand, but I knew that I was building my online business and, so, and I wanted to be able to move around. I didn't really want to stay in one place with a job and get an apartment or something. And so I was looking to figure out how am I going to afford this? some upon house sitting and it's really been just a really wonderful way for me to not only see the world um, live more like a local which was always really my reason for doing this I don't love being a tourist like I definitely have my moments I like to go out and do the touristy things but when I'm traveling I like to stay for at least a month at a time and I love to see what it's like to actually live like a local so it allows me to do that. And point number three, which I <laughs> hinted at the top, um, you know, hostels get a little tiring. They're great for meeting people, but they're not great for privacy and amenities. Um, hotels are great for amenities, but not great for meeting people. And so house sitting for me has just really been a wonderful opportunity to have the amenities of a home like I always get a real bed. I always have a kitchen. Um, I have a fridge where I can put food. Like I can, I can live a more um, regular lifestyle with being able to go grocery shopping and come home and cook and do things like that, as well as the comforts of a home. And then on top of that, I get some really awesome animals that I get to hang out with. So um, it can be challenging to meet people house sitting. I'm not going to say that it won't. Um, but because of that, and because I am a solo sitter, I don't travel with somebody else. I do get a little picky about which ones I actually will select. So if it's kind of remote and it's out and it's far from people or a city or things to do, I'm probably not going to take something like that. I'm more inclined to take one where there are things within walking distance. Um, and there's a little bit of like activity or, you know, something that I have access to where I could actually meet people. 
But going back to the platforms, so how do you actually find them, right? So like, how do I know that it's in the city or the country or something like that? Well, going back to the platforms, um, once you sign up for whichever one you want, what you want to do is set up your profile. So this includes some pictures and you should do, think of it kind of like a dating profile. Like you want some of your face, you want some maybe of you taking care of animals, maybe doing some of your hobbies, um, something that kind of shows them who you are, but gives them an idea of, you know, a little bit of your personality. I would refrain from including anyone in the photos who won't be house sitting with you because that can just be kind of confusing how many people are coming in. Um, so make sure they're just you or the person you're house sitting with. Fill out your profile. Include things like, why do you want to house sit? Um, why should the homeowner have you in their home? Uh, what about their animal makes you, I guess you don't know their animal yet. We'll talk about applications in a second, but just sort of generally like, you know, did you grow up with animals? Do you love animals? What kind of animals? Things like that. Just allow them to get to know you. And then the last piece is you want to try to have references. If you're just getting started with house sitting, you may not have those yet. So you can ask local like family or friends or anyone in your community who maybe like taken their dog on walks or maybe they've asked you to look after the home and they were out for a little bit. Try to find people like that who you can get some references from before you're able to get them on the platforms. So now you have your profile set up. What next? Well, homeowners also have profiles set up and their dates and their home and the animals that they have and the responsibilities that are expected of you. So what you can do then is you can just go through and filter for dates or location or kind of what you're looking for to see if there's anything that matches with you. Then you can apply for a set because um, usually the homeowners put them up in advance. So you're going to be able to apply, chat with them. And then I always request a video call. So before I've accepted it, before they agree to bring me in, I always request a video call just so you can kind of, you know, you can just get a better instinct for a person that way. And also maybe like see their home on the video, make sure it matches the photos that they've included, maybe meet their animals. Sometimes the animals are really curious what's happening and they'll say, poke their little heads in and say hi too. So I always do that before I confirm a sit. And once the sit is confirmed, then it's more just about logistics and making sure I get there on the right time and I know how to get there and things like that. Now on the flip side, um, you can also have homeowners reach out to you directly. Of course, this is gonna be less driven by you and you're gonna have to kind of see if they send messages to you. So I wouldn't recommend this. If you're really out looking to travel via house sitting, you're gonna want to be applying to actual sits, but homeowners do have the opportunity to look at your your profile and reach out to you directly, which has happened to me many, many times. Most of the time my schedule doesn't allow for me to go to their house sit, but it is an option. So the biggest thing I would say about house sitting as a someone who's also working remotely. So some people who house sit are retired. Some people are doing it like me as a way just to kind of see the world and maybe have work that they have to do. Um, balancing the responsibilities of a house sit and work are, you know, they're like balancing anything else, but you do have to put the sit and the animals like high on your priority list. So if I'm going to a house sit and I know that the dog has to be walked three times a day and they'll kind of give you an idea like, oh, first thing in the morning, lunchtime, after dinner or something like that, or right before we go to bed, then I know that I need to be able to structure my day around the dog's schedule, whether that's bathroom breaks or feeding schedule or whatever. Um, also knowing this in advance will allow me to know what my ability to see the surrounding area is going to be. So say I'm in Sydney and I want to do lots of touristy things. I've never been to Sydney and I know I want to be out all day doing stuff, taking a sit that has a dog that needs regular walks and attention and the homeowner kind of expects you to be there. Um, obviously not 24 seven, they expect you to go out and do stuff, but they expect you to be there to take care of their animal. That's not gonna be a good sit for me, right? That's not gonna be a good sit for the lifestyle that I want to have while I'm in that location. There's also been plenty of times where I've done sits where I know I just need to put my head down and work and get a lot of stuff out. And so those dog breaks, dog walk breaks 
are great because it makes me take a break and it makes me like go out and get some like fresh air because I'm not worried about being a Taurus. I'm not worried about doing anything. I'm really just trying to get like a lot of work done. So it can also just depend on the season and what you're doing and where you want to go. For me, I have been able to, I house it for a whole year in New Zealand. I house that in Australia for two months. I did a six week sit in Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam. Um, and then I did one in Lyon, France, and one in Switzerland. And I've done a few more here and there. Um, currently, I am doing three months in New York City. So that's not just one three month sit, which is something you can do. You can do long term sits, um, like three to six months at a time. These are usually people with multiple homes and they're only in one house for six months at a time. Um, at that point, they probably don't have animals. It's more just taking care of the house and the plants and the garden and things like that. But for me, for this three months, I've filled it up with five different sits. So I typically um, don't take a sit that's a minimum or less than two weeks just because it's a lot of work to get from place to place, learn the routine, like where do I go to the grocery store? How does this work? Like, there's still a lot of like house quirks for each place. So anything less than two weeks, especially because I am working can be really challenging, but I've been able to, yeah, I mean, I get to live in New York City for three months over the summer and I'm paying for maybe, maybe total one week of accommodation because I have a few gaps here and there, a day here, two days there. And when the gaps happen, I just find an Airbnb or a hostel or a hotel or something and just fill that in. Um, I don't try to fill every single moment with a house sit. Um, but yeah, so three months here paying for maybe a max of a week of accommodation. And in return, I get to meet some very lovely animals, get a lot of work done, and still have the comforts of home while I'm traveling. This video was a little bit longer <laughs> than I was expecting to make it and I apologize, um, but I hope that you found it really helpful and really interesting to see how house sitting could maybe be an option for you. So I am an affiliate of a couple of the platforms that I am on, so I will leave those links below if you're interested in getting started on one of those platforms. And as well, I have a free download, which is how to design your work and travel lifestyle. So if you're really just getting started and you don't know exactly what all you want, I definitely recommend downloading that because that will help walk you through the different things you need to decide before you start your digital nomad journey. Thank you so much for being here and listening to my experience of traveling by house sitting. I am Traveling Taylor. You can follow me on Instagram for digital nomad and travel tips. And be sure to subscribe to my channel right here because I release a new video every Tuesday. Thank you for being here and I will see you next week.